In the late 1970s, China began a great battle. A great battle against the desert. China's northern areas have been increasingly afflicted by desertification. The encroaching deserts wreak havoc on people's lives and livelihoods, and for several decades the government has invested a great deal of resources in trying to stop the deserts from moving forward. In this video, I want to talk about the desertification problem and how the Chinese are trying to stop it. Some 35% of China's entire landmass is prone to desertification. That means the land is either arid, semi-arid, or subhumid arid. These desertifying areas are massive, covering 498 counties in 18 provinces. Furthermore, there are hyper-arid desert patches in the Inner Mongolia, Gansu, and Xinjiang areas. As with all big ecological problems, desertification has multiple interlocking causes. The cause most closely identified with desertification has to do with deforestation leading to wind-driven soil erosion. As with, with many countries throughout the past 100 years, industrialization and an economic development at all costs mentality meant drastic and unsustainable harvesting of the forest. For example, let's look at the lowest plateau, one of China's cradles of civilization and home to 60 million people. Forest cover here had averaged 15% since the Ming Dynasty. But since the PRC's founding, that cover has declined to just 3%. Plant roots hold down soil and sand, so without them, they are easily picked up by the winds. In other areas, the cause can be primarily attributed to grazing animals. Overgrazing can denude these areas of grass roots holding down the sand and soil. Bare soils are the start of future sand dunes and dust storms. The grasslands destruction problem is quite large. 59.6% of China's grasslands have seen some form of permanent damage, or 1.38 million square kilometers. Some 5,600 tons of organic material and soil have blown away as a result. It would take 270,000 tons of fertilizer to replace such lost agricultural capacity. Desertification's most immediate threat to humans are sand and wind. High winds kick up massive sandstorms that cause economic damage and can even kill people. Strong hot winds make sand dunes and take them far. Not only is sand coarse and rough and irritating, it gets everywhere. Covering railways, roads, villages, and irrigated farmlands, sand from these storms find their way into the Yellow River where they cause sediment damage to dams downstream. May 1993, a massive dust storm spanning four provinces from Xinjiang to Ningxia killed 85 people and 120,000 head of cattle. North China is one of the least developed areas of China, and its residents can't easily afford to bounce back from such losses. And even if it does not kill you outright, breathing in the sand causes health problems. Salt grains and fine quartz create hazy dust clouds that hang in the air for a long time. Haze like this can't be easily ignored because they make their way to huge urban areas like Beijing. These dust storms are increasing in frequency. In the 1950s, China recorded just five dust storms a year. The year 2000 saw eight such dust storms in a single 45-day period in northern China. And desertified land is hard to reclaim. For example, the lands west of the Tangier Desert. Historical records from 1,500 years ago showed that these used to be huge, vast grasslands. They desertified in just 500 years, and since then, 1,000 years, the strong winds and sand have prevented the grass from ever growing back, despite good temperatures and strong rains. The Chinese people have been fighting the encroaching deserts for centuries. There's records as far back as 500 years ago of Chinese tribesmen transplanting trees from one place to another. And the current Chinese government continues the fight today. In the late 1990s, they identified desertification as a critical national issue and passed relevant legislation to combat it. This might sound like needless paperwork at first, but it matters more than you think. Previously, the encroaching desert problem got little attention 
because nobody owned the forests. So they became a public good that everyone raided. Your tragedy of the commons, so it is called, in Economics 101. This led to big deforestation and illegal harvesting trends that contributed majorly to the soil erosion problems. These new laws allowed the government to legislate punishments for illegal harvesting like this. Big sexy engineering projects like the Green Great Wall of China get a lot of attention, but to me, small bureaucratic moves like these do just as much in fixing the issue. With some 42% of China's total land threatened by desertification, the government launched the Green Great Wall project in 1978. This multi-phase, multi-decade project, the goal is to help arrest the erosion situation by planting plants and shrubs as shelter belts, among other things. From 1978 to 1985, some 6 million hectares were planted. At first, many of these shelter belts quickly died, leading to much reflection on behalf of the organizers. It's also led to a few viral Reddit posts. But over time, people got better at this, and the techniques have matured. In this section, I want to touch very briefly on some of these techniques, which to ordinary folk can seem, well, they are super sophisticated. But I do want to note, this is a very brief review, and different techniques are deployed depending on the nature of the damage and the nature of the land. Shelter break forest plantations are what most people think when they think Green Great Wall. And they are quite effective. They are the most commonly used technique. They are cheaper than most other things, and their benefits have been sustained for long periods of time, meaning five years. And I've seen this asked before on Reddit, which trees used for these areas depend on the region. Authorities try to use native vegetation. For these shelter belts, fast-growing poplars are generally used. Here's one. Populus pseudocimini, a tree natively found on mountain slopes and rivers in China. It can grow in heavy clays and is highly wind tolerant. And those trees can grow to as high as 65 feet or 20 meters. For deserts with high wind areas and drifting sands, a checkerboard arrangement for planting shrubs and plants was development. Straw some 10 or 20 centimeters deep is laid on these one meter by one meter checkerboards to help keep seeds from being blown away. The plants chosen for these checkerboards are usually Artemisia ordosica, a shrub known for its sand fixing properties, and the Korshinsk pea shrub. A mix is preferred over just having one type of shrub as they have different depth of roots and can reach water sources of differing sizes. It kind of works, but is labor intensive eats up straw like no tomorrow, and it does not help recover soil that is already heavily damaged in the sense that they have no more biological material or topsoil left. So what are the results of this amazing great effort? They are generally quite positive, but they also illustrate the difficulties of reversing some 100 years of industrialization and deforestation. At the end of the second phase of the Green Great Wall in 1995, forest coverage in the affected areas had climbed to 7.9%, from 3% before the project began. By 2004, China had reclaimed some 37,924 square kilometers of desert as compared to 1999. So 37,924 square kilometers of desert is no longer so. This is a legitimately great achievement. However, it only makes up 1.4% of China's total desertified area. And this took some 10 years. In addition, the government first targeted the areas easiest to reclaim from desertification. Future reclamation will cost more and be harder to achieve. And this stuff is already quite expensive. Estimates show that it would take 244 years to reclaim all that had been lost in the past century if reclamation goes as fast as the second phase of the Green Great Wall, and this is not guaranteed. To that being said, it is an improvement though over the pace from the first phase of the Green Great Wall, which at its end estimated 3,725 years to total recovery. 
but new innovations are being developed all the time, including the discovery of nitrogen fixing plants for implanting. This is an international uh, effort, so a lot of collaboration between scientists in China and Japan and Europe and the United States, including a few uh, interesting plant species introduced from the United States. In addition, China has been working on building economic incentives for locals to protect their own land. A kind of, if you fix it, you get to reap the benefits of fixing it, of owning it. Which I think is actually pretty innovative, and I, I like that part too. Desertification is a national problem. And I think that's something that should be admired is that the Chinese government has implemented national level solutions to try and fix it. Whether it all works out in the end, whether China can hold back its deserts, the answer is still up in the air. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Bye-bye.